BRICS rumors about the BRICS countries starting a gold-backed currency. And while I'm not against countries forming a gold-backed currency, I don't think it's going to happen. I know that's a controversial statement, and I'm deflating some possible exciting news here, but I want to take this from a logical perspective. Part of what I do with the Endgame Investor is I manage emotions. I try to keep people level and balanced. And a rumor like this can get people overly excited. And if it happens, it happens. And I'm not against it happening. But I'm going to try to explain here why it's probably not going to happen, at least as the gold and silver bugs are portraying it or the excited ones are. Rafi views the notion of the BRICS countries contemplating a gold-backed currency as a mere rumor. According to state-run RT, the Russian government has confirmed that Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, also known as BRICS nations, will introduce a new trading currency backed by gold. The official announcement is expected to be made during the BRICS summit in August in South Africa. Recently in the context of currency value, Rafi states the belief that the quantity of gold held in a central bank's balance sheet does not influence its worth. During the interview, Rafi, a financial analyst and expert in the field of economics and precious metals, cited various instances of central banks engaging in cumulative sales, particularly during the collapse of the London Gold Pool in 1968 and the gold market surge in the late 1970s. The hefty sales we saw in 1967 were a consequence of this price peg coming under attack as investors piled into gold. The banks in question avoided this scenario by selling vast quantities of gold, around 2,000 tons in total over 1967-68. But the episode effectively signaled the end of the Bretton Woods system and the last remnants of the gold standard. Fast forward to 2022 and the picture is vastly different. The gold market is deeper and more liquid. 2022 was a record-breaking year for central bank gold buying. Rafi highlights a significant observation that despite a prolonged period of central banks selling gold from 1988 to 2009, followed by net buying from 2010 to 2022, there seems to be minimal influence on the price of gold. According to the 2023 Central Bank Gold Reserve Survey recently released by the World Gold Council, 24% of central banks plan to add more gold to their reserves in the next 12 months. 71% of central banks surveyed believe the overall level of global reserves will increase in the next 12 months. That was a 10-point increase over last year. Rafi points to the Central Bank of Kazakhstan, which has been stockpiling gold since around 2004, but its currency's value against the dollar has declined over time. The National Bank of the Republic of Kazakhstan, NBK, is no exception, with its share of gold reserves now standing at 69% of total reserves. The increase in gold reserves has coincided with a decline in the value of the Kazakhstan currency, the Tange. In 2004, the Tange was worth around 4 cents. By 2022, the Tange had fallen to around 1 cent. Rafi analyzes that, Based on historical trends, central bank gold buying and selling will continue to have a limited effect on the overall price of gold. We will now bring you clips of Rafi Farber from his recent interview with Arcadia Economics. Before we proceed further in this video, please make sure to subscribe our channel and click the bell icon to stay updated. See here, going back to 1950, there has been more years of deeper cumulative sales from i think this is 1968 when the london gold pool collapses when the central banks were selling all these tons of gold to try to maintain uh the the gold peg at 35 dollars an ounce uh that didn't work 1968 1969 here's where the the gold the, the gold window was closed so to speak it's not closed because we can still exchange gold for dollars but that's my uh, that's my thing, but this uh, colloquially, people say the gold window closed here, even though I disagree with that. But anyway, if you look at central bank gold sales and gold buying, we can see here in 1980, this is 1970, 78, 79, what, 77, 78, 79, 80, right? These four years is when gold was really bubbling. And three of those four years, central banks were selling gold at, uh, besides the, at, at the second highest rate ever, right? <laughs> Going back to 1950. So, uh, so yeah, central banks were, were selling gold here, 500 tons in 1979, and gold was 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 going crazy. It was going vertical. Right? And here's 98. Here's the gold top. Um, it, it topped in January 21st. So when central banks started buying again, that's when gold fell. Right. So I'm saying here that 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 central bank gold buying does not really affect the price of gold that much. It doesn't seem to. Uh, so. <laughs> 
So here uh, we have, again, 1989, from 19, maybe it's 88, 80, 88 or 89, until uh, 2009 here. So for 20 years, yeah, 20 years straight, central banks were selling. And now we have uh, net buying from 2010 to 2022. That's 12 years. This is 20 years. This is 12 years. So they've sold a lot more gold than they've bought, right, since, um, let's say, 1968 when the gold pool uh, collapsed. My point here with these charts is to show that central bank gold buying is overrated. It doesn't really matter. And that uh, the amount of gold on a central bank's balance sheet does not affect the currency's value. Why is that? Because these currencies are not convertible to gold. It's not like any of these countries, central banks are saying, well, you deposit gold with us and we'll give you, or you, uh, and we get, we'll give you currency or you deposit currency with us, we'll give you gold. It's not convertible. This is just a game that they're playing to manipulate exchange rates. Uh, so here we have the Central Bank of Kazakhstan. They have been stockpiling gold from, uh, let's say, 2004, when it was very, very low, around 50 tons here. And they really got going in 2012, and they really started stockpiling gold up from maybe 70 tons or something to about a high of 400 in 2021. And they sold off a little bit recently, but you know, uh, look at their currency, right? This is January 2000, around lining up with uh, up here, and uh, the their exchange rate versus the dollar. That's what this is. The their currency, whatever it's called, the tengi. Okay, never heard of that one before, but okay. So it's up from um, meaning down from 141 in 2000 to 444 dollars per tengi. So uh, it's it's fallen by uh, <laughs> it's it's about a third of the strength that it used to be versus the dollar. So this uh, this gold stacking by the central bank, it doesn't doesn't affect the currency because it's not convertible, right? It's just a game. Farber highlights gold currency's convertibility importance and its potential advantages for BRICS nations. Gold considered by BRICS for international trade may prompt increased accumulation by central banks and individual investors. If its role as a global alternative currency grows, gold's price may also rise. Rafi notes a surge in the gold and silver mining sector, hinting at a possible new intermediate rally. However, he expects a minor pullback ahead. What makes the historical prescience of inverted yield curves so impressive is that the recessions that followed did so within a relatively short period. All nine recessions since 1955 have been preceded by an inverted yield curve according to research from the San Francisco Fed, except in one case. The time between an inverted yield curve and a recession has ranged from 6 to 24 months. As soon as the yield curve begins to invert, economists and investors begin to turn their heads. Keep in mind that the curve once again inverted in August 2022. Rafi foresees the next recession to be a banking crisis, citing the vulnerability of banks and their impending challenges. Let's get back to interview. Okay, we know that in order for a gold currency to actually work and be trusted as a gold currency, it's got to be convertible. If the BRICS countries are going to use this currency amongst themselves, then what happens? You have a, a gold currency versus their fiat currencies, let's see, Brazil, uh, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. That's BRICS. They're all inflated. They are all inflate their money supplies. They all operate on a debt-based monetary system. Um, if they actually have a gold currency or trade in physical gold, if they just like ship the gold to each other, well, the reason to trade in a gold currency is you don't have to do the shipping. It just makes it more efficient. And here we look at a, a chart for FSM. Look at yesterday's surge or two days ago's surge for people watching this now on Friday. Uh, we've blasted through the 50-day and 200-day moving averages. Uh, all gold and silver mining stocks were up on Wednesday. It looks like we're going to have some nice follow-through today on Thursday, and who knows if it'll continue into Friday. But we're going to have a, a small pullback eventually, yeah, but it looks like we're on the way to uh, a new intermediate rally here. It's all in all, Fortuna's looking really good. A lot of mid-tier gold and silver miners are looking really good right now. But anyway, the point here is that the low CPI inflation numbers might have marked the bottom of the yield curve inversion from the 10 year to the three month. This is the most extreme yield curve inversion, I think since the late seventies or maybe ever. I'm not exactly sure because uh, this chart doesn't go back, but it doesn't matter if it's the most ever or if it's one of the most ever. So if the Fed is done hiking rates, 
and interest rates on the low end are starting to go down, then this inversion is going to start heading this way. And uh, we're going to start seeing uh, less of a negative inversion and finally a positive yield curve as it normally is, right? So if you look at the lag between the, um, if you can see the gray, the gray strips here, these are, you know, they indicate recession if you've seen a Fred chart before. Uh, so here we have a lag from when the yield curve inverted maximum in 1989 until the next recession in 1990 was 14 months. Here in 2000, um, it it bottomed here, the yield curve inversion, the yield conversion top, the yield curve bottom. Here, uh, it four months before the 2001 recession. In 2006, uh, it was, or this is 2007, or it was one of those. So it was 13 months between the bottom of the yield curve inversion and the next recession. Here it was, this is September 2019, and this year is March 2020. We all know what happened then. The next recession, that was five months. So it's going to be somewhere between four months, maybe 13 months, uh, somewhere between those brackets, uh, most likely, is going to be the next recession. And the next recession is going to be a banking crisis because the banks are sick and they're dying. Uh, we all know that uh, their days are numbered. And it's been my thesis at the Endgame Investor that we've got one more recession, one more financial crisis before the Endgame. Uh, so on that note, you know, given that that's my timeline, uh, then I don't really think it matters so much if the BRICS currency actually uh, happens or not. I don't think it will. And we're going to go into exactly why right now. And I know this is a controversial position, but I'm not afraid of... Uh, you know, bucking the trend. I got to say what I think, and this is what I think, and I could be wrong, and okay, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I have gold and silver anyway. It's fine. The potential for a new intermediate rally in the gold and silver mining sector adds further intrigue to the precious metals market. Looking ahead, the consideration of a gold-backed currency by BRICS nations could potentially signal a shift in the global monetary landscape. How do you think the consideration of a gold-backed currency by BRICS nations might impact the global financial system? Share your thoughts in comments section below. If you find this video informative, don't forget to show your support towards our channel by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications to stay informed about our latest videos covering more interesting topics. Thank you for watching.